in this graph where you see the actually the um, how high the waves are getting in these in the oceans you can see that there's a lot of concentrated waves in the southern part of the world where there's unobstructed um, by continents the same reason why we have that large uh, uh, continental um, sorry the large Antarctic um, circumpolar current on the bottom of the ocean which actually makes it difficult for seafarers to travel in these areas because you have these large currents and these large waves and then you have the polar easterlies uh, have causing large storms as well, but the trade winds are constantly pushing the uh, more more the ocean in that direction west in that area, which creates the, the Antarctic Central Polar Current. In the same way, it creates basically a large fetch or a large section of wind where the waves can actually catch this wind and get larger and larger, as you see in the picture above. So you have a continuous long region for the waves to actually catch that energy and become larger and larger, and as they become larger, they become bigger and bigger. So you're going to have a very concentrated pattern of waves on the bottom of the Indian, Atlantic, and Pacific Oceans where you have these large uh, areas for, for the winds to catch that. Meanwhile, in, in, in areas of lo large oceanic basins like the Pacific, the Atlantic, and even the middle of the Indian Ocean, things like uh, the Giris, Coriolis resistance, tidal resistance, uh, gravitational resistance are going to are going to be stopping the wave motion and reducing the the actual uh, fetches because you're going to have uh, currents interacting with waves and disrupting the wave motion you're going to have the Coriolis effect moving the, the waves and disrupting that creating those bulges and disrupting the wave motion and then you also have continental barriers which are going to block the ability of the winds to continue to push push the waves to make them larger and larger especially in areas where you have a lot of islands which act, act like shields or blockages which slow down wave motion even more and so behind an island chain for example here in Japan in uh, in China China by you, on the northern part of India uh, uh, sorry Asia you're going to have less waves because there's not a lot uh, it's, there's an island chain blocking uh, on the other side uh, that that the waves that from hitting Asia I mean the same thing about the Indian Indonesian Ocean here, so many islands, you're going to cause disruptance of the wave motion, same thing in the Caribbean Ocean. Meanwhile, in the Bering Sea, you're going to have uh, very strong storms, storms leading up to the Bering Sea, and so you're going to have the this stronger wave pattern here, but then after the Alaskan Islands, you're not going to have that many waves. So you see that how the islands act like barriers that block the wave height. But when you don't have such barriers, the waves can, are allowed to grow larger and larger, and which is why the bottom of the ocean here in the southern hemisphere gets extremely large waves. So that is actually showing you what, uh, what I showed you up there in a global scale. Along the same lines of this uh, pattern of blockage that the continents cause, or the lack of blockage leading to larger waves, um, as we're going to talk about when we do another video called Types of Waves, um, there are other things that also create wind uh, waves other than winds, such as like large disturbances on the surface of the ocean, such as the things that cause tsunamis, like um, say a meteor impact, or a large landslide, or an earthquake, or something like that. There's also tidal waves, waves that are associated with actual motion of tides. And so these are waves that take a long time to actually be noticeable because all you're seeing is a very slow increase of the ocean and a small decrease of the ocean as the tides actually fluctuate in the ocean, the ocean basins. And so, uh, and then it does also have these um, very choppy waves of just, just basically tribulations or turbulences of the surface water. But what these ty different types of waves in the ocean do all depends on the specific uh, patterns uh, of the oceanic basins. And so something large that the, like the Pacific Ocean where there's a lot of things that are actually going on to interfere with the formation of waves, including the giris, uh, the currents of the ocean, and like I mentioned earlier in the video, uh, the gravity of the ocean, little, the Earth literally holding the oceans down, the Coriolis effect, which is moving the pattern of the of direction of the currents and the waves, um, the surface tension of the water, 
There's a lot of things, and then barriers of islands and things like that. There's a lot of things which disrupt the formation of waves as they travel through the deep oceanic basins. And they also interact with currents. They catch different winds. They become part of different patches. They interact with other waves. And when everything is said and done, it's very hard to predict how waves will actually form in large oceanic currents, like, uh, regions like this. But one thing is for sure. The largest, the continuous fetch, the biggest will be the wave. And so the fetch is this idea of one continuous area where the wave, where the wind is exposed to a wave. So that means, that for example, uh, sorry, the wave is exposed to wind. And as it catches more and more wind, the waves will be get, big, get bigger and bigger. And so the notice, for example, that if you have a storm system, for example, with like a hurricane, which is blowing winds like an anticyclone does um, away from its center, it's going to cause a disturbance on the, on the surface of the water and it's going to create these swells or, or groups of waves which are blast away from the storm. And as long as the storm pushes, as long as you are in with the field of the storm, you're going to get pick up more and more speed and, we, and we create bigger and bigger waves. And so this is what we call the, a storm's fetch. And you can see here, what they're trying to show you is that uh, as the waves are closer and closer to the storm, they are stronger and stronger because they're closer and closer to the actual fetch. And that's kind of how the waves grows as it part of, becomes part of a dynamic storm system. The same thing is true about as waves approach the, 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 the uh, beach and they catch the ocean, the ocean breeze or that we learned about when we did the climate chapter, the atmosphere chapter. There's always a breeze in the mornings and throughout the day that blows from the water towards the land. So the waves actually pick up speed as they become part of that fetch. Uh, on the other hand, if a wave actually goes against a current, in other words, a, a water current or a wind current suddenly starts blowing in the opposite direction of the wave, that is going to reduce the wave. So if the, words are, if the wave is, uh, suddenly hits uh, wind in the opposite direction, it's basically going to reverse that because it's, it's catching a new fetch and so forth. And that usually causes blasting of the tops of the waves and things like that which can happen anyways, even if it's not opposing currents, but whenever waves interact with other waves or the wind basically picks up the top of the wave and blasts it away, uh, we call that white caps. And these are things that have nothing to do with the waves breaking, the way, the, the way they do when they approach the beach. This is just the tops of oceanic waves in the deep ocean basins being blown away. And these white caps are basically um, sea spray or the, or the ocean picking up the top of the wave and t t tossing it off. And when the waves do, they, they actually make the ocean wider than it actually is. And remember, since white is very reflective color, it actually, theory says that the presence of white, of white caps in the surface of the ocean actually is one of the things that helps cool down our planet even more than already the fact that the water is very, very high albedo. But this increases the albedo of the water even more by making its color white. And so the white caps... As the more white caps you have in the ocean, the more cooling is happening. So when the winds blow against the surface of the water, it actually happens to cool out the world even more. Um, now remember that as the wave is in a fetch, it's actually going to pick up more and more speed. And as it picks up more and more speed, the waves will start going faster and faster, which will change both the frequency and the period of these waves. And as they go through the fetch, the waves will accelerate, start spreading from each other, you, and uh, also become faster as they go through it and become larger and become more powerful like we mentioned in the pre previous video but the whole idea of a fetch is that and here you actually see a representation of a tsunami happening because of an earthquake a large wave pattern can actually initiate and this is not a wind fetch but it's the same idea because you have a tribulation of the surface of the water uh, you're going to have stronger and stronger waves and so the waves motion actually ex accelerates from a certain a central point and all of this is of course going to be important as we talked about uh, different causes for waves later on and so um, after this video you should understand that a lot of different things can cause waves wind is definitely the major factor you also have major disturbances like things like uh, tsunamis and catastrophic collisions and things like that and you also have tidal waves or waves associated with tide motion but that these waves uh, how big they get depends on a lot of factors, including how um, how big the wave is, um, because as it becomes bigger, it can actually catch more wind, 
But remember that if it gets too big, it becomes too large to and too heavy, and if there's not enough water underneath to support the weight of the wave, it will collapse under its own weight. Uh, we also have the fact of the fetch. The longer the wind is exposed to a fetch, the bigger it's going to get. The, the wave is, gets bigger as it is exposed for longer, and more intense winds will also make bigger waves as well. Uh, on the next video, we explore the different types of waves, which have to do with how they are constructed, what is the origin of their of their of their energy, and uh, what are the things which are disrupting them or causing them to be different. And remember, we also talked about in these last last two last two videos about the fact that the specific pattern of wave motion will change in, in the deep ocean basins because of disruptance events and things like that. All right. So review this stuff and then move on to the next video where we talk about the different types of waves.